what's going on, everybody? This is Slappy McPhee, and I have Qbert. Hey, what's up, everybody? And today we're going to go ahead and do a tutorial on actually starting from scratch to go ahead and get started with the Retro Arena, which is currently at uh, version uh, 3.x. So um, as we walk through the tutorial, we'll actually, uh, if, for example, if you're using a, an external uh, hard drive, then we will guide you to uh, reference the other tutorial for that. Um, but uh, go ahead, Qbert, and uh, let's get going. Okay, first things first, uh, go to the retroarena.com. Cool spiffy little logo there. It'll redirect to odrearena.com. Go ahead and click on Downloads. And then you'll click on Mirror 1. So yeah, real quick here, um, regarding what's going to happen when he, he clicks on the Mirror 1, um, we are going to be putting Mirror 2 back online. We had some problems with some updates with our seed box, but those have been resolved. So uh, today is the 24th of March, 2019. Within the next day or so, we'll have Mirror 2 back online. But as you can notice here, um, you're going to want to read the information that we have, right? Uh, one of the key bits of it is that um, the download password is uh, available in a pin post in our announcements channel on our Discord server or also in our Facebook group. We have an announcement that's pinned with it. Okay, uh, so you just click on the mirror, you put in the password, which is secret, and then it'll um, start downloading. Once it's done downloading, you're just going to extract it so you have the just the image file left. And then you're going to format your SD card. I know you can do it without formatting your SD card, but if you have any previous builds or any kind of partition, it's just good to start from scratch. Um, I prefer mini partition tool, or um, you can use AOMU partition assistant standard. That's that's free and it's nice and easy, so I'll just use that now. Yeah, and then another one as a point of reference is, is you can use SD formatter. Um, I know I problem with SD formatter though, um, um, depending on the type of file system that was previously on it, on certain certain Linux partitions, a SD card formatter will refuse to see the card. Well, um, that's if you're using version it. five. So that's what I was exactly. That's what I was about that. to say. There's, yeah, there's an upgrade. I, so. Yeah, I still use version four, mm -hmm. um, which you can still find and is available. And you also raise a really good point. So if you're using an EMMC or you know, uh, especially with EMMC, um, you're going to want to use uh, the disk part tool, which we can go ahead and kind of go over. Uh, we'll do a supplementary tutorial that actually raises a pretty cool point. So I will go ahead and make a note of that. And um, I'll do a quick and dirty on that myself here uh, in the next couple days. But um, yeah, so with the EMMC, you can do it that way. Actually, if you find speeds being pretty degraded, um, doing the disk part, if you're using Windows anyway, will actually clear up a lot of those errors because it actually cleans the part, master boot partition table on it completely. So, sorry, Q, go ahead. That's all right. So I'm going to just do it my way because you said you're going to do another tutorial here. So I just go ahead and, first of all, I make sure it's my SD card. So I know that this is my SD card, so I'll just go and delete this partition. Oh. If you don't use um, AOMI too much, um, please note that you can't do multiples. It's freeware, so you can't do multiples at one time. Multiple, like, uh, partition deletes and stuff like that. So it's kind of annoying. Right. Well, obviously, of course, if you pay for it, then you... you then you can that. do multiples, yeah. Yeah, get that power unlocked. Um, so, yeah, you know, and then possibly and in then the future... And then you can just create a regular partition. It doesn't matter what size. It just, it, it, you know, or what, um, or what file system, because uh, Disk Imager, you know, the image software is going to take care of it. It just has to be a valid partition. Right. And so what a, um, one of the things that we might possibly do down the road, um, 
can't guarantee it right but we may end up actually doing a tutorial like how to do some of this stuff with mac os but it all depends on if we can get the vm stood up and uh you know get, get going with that because none of our team actually uses mac so all right now um once you have your partition your card set up and ready to go go ahead and launch etcher or win 32 disk imager um, I prefer Etcher. A lot of people prefer Win32 Disk Imager. Um, which would you rather me do, Slappy? Well, so one of the things I do want to bring up, and thank you for talking about this, is that if you use Etcher, um, now with Etcher, it can actually do the decompression. You'll notice when you download the file, right, it's in a .gz, which is a certain type of archive. I, I know myself, I know several people that have run into this situation. Um, if you do use Etcher, it's just kind of better to actually still decompress the file. Some people have been able to use it without an issue, and Etcher will decompress it, and their image runs fine. Um, but I have had experiences where it just does not. Something happens during that process. So yeah, that's I my recommendation. Yeah, I decompress my images, so. Yeah, so I mean, I just wanted to bring that up. You you can do either way. Um, it doesn't matter to me, you know, but whichever one you want to go with right now, that's cool. Well, I have Etcher set up right, so I'll just go ahead and bring it back up. And, here, and mine's already unzipped, so you just select your image. Um, as you can see, uh, uh-oh, spoiler alert, in two, <laughs> Rock Pro 4, there we go. <laughs> right. Um, make sure you select the correct uh, SD card. Yeah, and, that, and, and that's uh, definitely another good thing, right, about Etcher um, compared, for example, to using Win32 Disk Imager is that... It'll let you know if, it's a, if it says it's too big. It'll right. actually say, you know, oh, this is un, un, unusually big for an SD card, you know, uh, and, and it says, are you sure? And it gives you a whole bunch of warnings. Um, oh, one other thing. If you are using Etcher for the uh, first time, you want to go into Settings. And you want to uncheck validate right on a success. Otherwise, you're going to be there for a long time. Okay. Right. All right. So then go ahead and say flash. Say continue. You might have to say yes depending on your user account control in Windows. So and real, it'll go. Real quick, while this is actually going on and doing this, I've never actually attempted to do this during a write, but um, this brings up kind of a good point. Do you have. Um, an MD5 checksum application? No, I'm not running anything on here, no. Okay. I can grab one real quick if you want me to. Yeah, so if you want to open up... Um... Oh, actually, we can go to the downloads here. Don't, don't we have it in the downloads? Oh, uh, yeah, I believe we do, yep. Yeah. Yeah, scroll down, right? So there... There it is right there, yeah. So download an MD5 checksum utility. Now, what you're actually going to do with this, and, and some people have kind of gotten um, a little bit turned around on this one, is that when you're going to check the MD5 on this, this is actually on the compressed download. It's not after you extract it, because once you extract it, it'll have a different MD5 sum. So you want to mm -hmm. validate before you go into the process of writing, especially if you have either a flaky internet connection or a really slow one. You want to go ahead and do this. You'll pay yourself a service for waiting a couple minutes, uh, you know, depending upon the speed of your computer to actually perform a check over waiting for it to flash, getting the thing turned on, and then you just see some really weird things going on. Yeah, I don't have a I don't have a compressed image. Crap. Um, you know what? I'll download it while this is flashing. How's that sound? Let's get our... Actually, it's downloading, so it's almost done downloading here. So I will have one to check with. That's kind of convenient. Look at that. Yeah, it works out really well, actually. Yeah, I'm giving our web hosts a run for their money today, huh? Starting and stopping these downloads everywhere over here. <laughs> All right, so after that. Also, a lot of people have been asking me about where this external storage command document is. Here it is, guys. <laughs> Just click on download. <laughs> right. I've had a lot of direct messages for that. Well, that's the other thing, too, is that we actually have the information in the tutorial, well, in the description for the tutorial video on 
YouTube, so um, if people actually paid attention to that, they probably wouldn't have to be asking those questions, but I get it. People get excited. They don't necessarily check the, the written description. I just like to because I've seen all kinds of cool information, and then at the end of the day, especially if something's referenced right in a video, a lot of times credit is given there and in the video, and it allows you to find more resources and possibly cool new YouTube channels, etc. All right, so let me add this. We go D. And you can actually drag and drop. So if you go to the... Oh, I can just drag and drop it to where yeah, I Yeah, so if you want to cancel, or you're right there anyway. Mm -hmm. So you can do it either <laughs> way, right? So you can choose here, yep. or you can go to the folder in a window and just drag and drop it in. So as and you can now see... It's it. Yep, it's processing the file. There you go, sorry about that. Right, so there's the current MD5. So then, if you, you want to compare that to your on yeah. what's on the website, yeah. And here is your MD5. Content is protected. I was trying to copy it. <laughs> is it... Really? Okay. Yeah. I have to so apologize, to guys. I'll have to, uh, but you know what? Make it a uh, just minimize the or make the window smaller. Yeah, and... no problem. And then I'll copy it over top. Yeah, underneath here. Yeah, and I mean, so that's something we'll have to address on this page because it you just basically be have to look at the last three on here and the first four. So that's it. Yeah, so you can yeah. pretty much assume that it's not going to be any much different if you got those right. So, yeah, but that so is right. It looks good, so that's that should be fine. That means you got a valid image, so you're all good. And our image just finished writing too, so we're good here, and we're ready for first boot. Um, before we uh, boot up the first time, since everybody's going to be do using everything, um, you know, over the network, uh, Windows 7 and Windows 10 has a problem seeing uh, Samba shares. Well, it doesn't actually have a problem seeing the Samba shares. It's just been disabled for security reasons. Um, so if you have Windows 10 or Windows 7, just click on the Windows key and then type in add. Just type in add on your keyboard. It'll automatically, you'll see, turn Windows features on or off. And then you'll scroll down and you'll look for SMB 1.0 CIFS uh, file sharing support. You're going to want to make sure that that has a, a an actual black check mark, well, a black square in it. And then just say, okay. Yeah, so, so for further clarification of that, essentially what they've done is, is for security reasons on default, they've disabled version dot one of Samba because it's an older version. However, uh, a lot of Linux distributions are still using the older Samba version. So that's the reason why you need to go through these steps. Okay, so once that's done, you'll be able to see your Odroid in your Windows Explorer and you'll be able to map a drive so you can actually scrape from the network and you don't have to have one of your USB ports taken up. So let me go ahead and reboot this. Okay, here's first boot. First boot, you might just get a black screen and then you'll see it reboot again. And in this process, essentially what it's doing is, is it's resizing the partition, um, the main partition on your media of choice, be it EMMC or SD card. Um, to take up the full capacity. Yeah, don't skip this one, by the way. Um, you can press enter to skip it, um, but it's better to see it if it reboots. That way you know it's already resized if it goes all the way through. Does that make sense? Yep. What I said? Okay, good. All right, so first things first, make sure you have your controllers plugged in and map your controllers. So yeah, so while he's doing this, actually, I'm going to bring up something that kind of is a sticking point, right? So one of the, the traditional gotchas that we see with people that are using Xbox controllers, so before you hit the OK, hopefully... Oops, sorry. Oh, yeah. So I'll have you go well, back. Well, no, I can go back into yeah. configure and put this as in. Yeah. So we'll just do it this way. So what will happen is, is a lot of times is that once you get down to the shoulder buttons or the triggers, it'll actually skip it. 
right? So there's no reason to get concerned if it skips. Just take your time if you happen to see that. Come back in and, um, you know, remap. But um, And you might even want to actually go in and clear out the controller config and then come back and remap. But you can actually scroll back up. So as you can see, what Q is doing here is you can scroll back up and, for example, he's showing you not define. So you click A and then it'll actually tell you to press anything and then you can actually map those properly. So, you know, if you have one of those controllers where it skips, you know, one of the things you want to be sure of is that you don't roll through this so fast that you're not able to pay attention to ensure that every key press and button, etc., uh, is actually being recognized. And then as you can see, very quickly it happened in there. You saw some bleed through the terminal where it was actually populating the information into the various emulator configs for the controller. That's just a little small bug. That doesn't mean that it's something earth shattering or terrible, right? All you have to do is hit backwards and it'll clear out either that or else upon reboot. So what Q just did there was, you know, for the purpose of the tutorial is he went and he disabled the BGM. <laughs> Exactly. So we could hear everything. So it's not so loud and overpowering there. All right. So we have everything there. I'm, I'm plugged into my network. And now um, we should be able to see the Odroid in our network. So if we click on network, yeah, and then Odroid. If you don't see it, what you can actually do as well, and what I Refresh. suggest to people is... Um, Sometimes it'll just be wonky, right? Like you just won't see it. If you actually go up to the top and uh, in your address bar, you can put in the backslash backslash Odroid, right? And you can tell it, you can force it to go look for that host name. And then what I like to do actually, Q, uh, and I suggest to people. Also, do... though, some people might have to turn on network discovery too. So oh, I yeah. might have it turn. Oh, yeah, that's one thing we do have to show because sometimes it won't even search at all. It'll just come up as blank. Yeah. So um, if you have Windows 10 or Windows 7, Windows key again, and then network discovery. I think it is. Oh, I'm sorry if you know how to type. Uh, I think it is. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Turn on network discovery. Well, you know what? We might as well find out how to do it. So... so, yeah, do a search for network and sharing. Just there type in sharing, and it'll go to advanced sharing. There you go. And then right here is turn on network discovery. There you go. I just forgot what the keyword was. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> right. So just type, in, just type in share, and it'll take you to the exact right spot instead of having to do 19 steps to get to it. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's Windows no. 10, and just type in share. And then right here, you got your turn on network discovery, and then turn on automatic separate of network connected devices. You want to make sure that's on there. So. Right, and then sometimes you'll actually... You might have to actually... apply, you know, uh, say safe changes, and you might have to give permission um, because of a user account control. Right, and then also when you try to go in for the first time when you click on network, sometimes there'll be a ribbon across the top saying network discovery is turned off, and you can click that. All right, so let's go ahead and show them Q here. Um, if you're running the 3.0.3, .3, there are a few items that you want to address right away. Yeah, first things first, update setup scripts, especially if you're going to do any kind of scraping or anything like that in case they decided to do any kind of uh, API updates. That stuff seems to break a lot. Then after that, once your scripts are updated, you're going to want to go into packages and then core packages. And you're going to want to go to settings menu first. I always go backwards. I don't know why. That's just me, though. So you can go remove and then install from binary. All right, and then go to run command, remove, install from binary. Right, and the reason why we're doing this is because we discovered a few updates after we did the release, and it got out there to much larger public 
consumption compared to our internal testing team, uh, we had to address a couple things. Okay. Well, now we need to reboot here and uh, have no fear of people. There's no hard drive attached, so it will not take long at all.